Welcome back everyone to another incredible episode of Chat with Dan. Now before we start, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to check this out. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, follow, it helps a lot, and again thank you. Have an incredible day or evening depending where you are, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. So Robert, thank you to uh thank you so much for accepting. Welcome to the show. It is so cool to have you here. Tell me how are you today? How's your day treating you so far? It's good. Uh, it's good. It's another day above ground, so I'm blessed. And, um, you know, I'm just working hard and trying not to hardly work, you know? <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. I can understand that. And, uh, you know, starting with the whole interview, let's go back in time a little bit here and tell me how, yeah, like how your career started, like what triggered it? Um, As far as being a creative, uh, you know, I was raised in a creative household. My dad's a motivational speaker and a poet. Mm. Uh, as far as like the social entrepreneurialism, you know, my mom worked in the educational system, so it was really ingrained in me. Um, and I started out as a artist, a musician, which I still do music. Um, the, the process into mobilizing in the film was a very organic and authentic process in itself. What happened was, is I, um, wrote a song called excuse my accent. Um, and then I was part of the creative direction of the music video, uh, which is like a short film. I think it was one of the best music videos to come out uh, in that time. So whoever's mm -hmm. listening, go look up, excuse my accent. Shout out to Dre Ross, Richard Stan, shout out to um, uh, Charlene, all the people who are a part of that film. Um, and when we were, when I was writing the song um, and we were developing the concept of excuse my accent, you know, I really believe that the overarching theme um, uh, in the conversation was necessary to be able to extend it and create a platform. I was deep diving, this is like a random um, story. I was deep diving into um, just the idea of immigration writing the song and we are doing okay. the film. Okay. And I came across the story of Hector Brajas, who's a deported veteran. Mm. And the thought process of those two words being together, deported and veteran, just didn't make any sense to me. I was really confused. I thought it was a typo. Kept researching and realized it is true. And so I, I reached out to Hector um, and asked him to be in that music video short film. And we were so, I don't know, inflamed from the story that okay. we decided to do a documentary on it. Um, we just felt that we could utilize our platform um to create some kind of awareness mm. uh, for this issue and so we that's how it all started and then from there we did um uh, the documentary bring them home which is uh you know a bag that we're still carrying to this day wow wow that's really cool such a journey okay and like was Beautiful. it right and like was it something else you wanted to be back then you know like was it something else you were like mm, you know i might gonna be i don't know lawyer police i don't know something else i mean i always wanted to be an entertainer i grew up watching my dad do the entertainment thing cool. um so i always wanted to be on stage so as a young uh, a young buck i started jumping on stages really early mm -hmm. um and so my thought process was you know i'd be chris brown at some point without the singing and my okay. moonwalk isn't the best moonwalk in the world, but I can fake <laughs> it. But um, that was my thought. Um, I think that um, sometimes you can have a goal or a plan in life and the universe just has something else in mind. Mm. Um, and, and it's just about riding the wave um, and being willing to surrender to where life takes you, you know? Totally, totally, yeah. Yeah, and tell me like, how you usually get the get like the idea to create a film like like what is let's say like your usual process for you to get the idea to be like okay let's let's make it happen for me personally i'm very much committed to bringing out stories of equity and humanism mm. um, i believe you know right now i'm really focused on uh, non-scripted and and documentary work we have some scripted work that we're working on But, you know, I, I, I mean, I feel like just the human experience in itself is so complex and entertaining. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I want to continue bringing those stories out. So the, the way that we see um, creation is when we come across stories that we feel 
can be uh, highlighted that need to be highlighted to push society forward and to push perspective forward as a collective whole. And those are the the stories that I'm really drawn to um, to put out, like the bring them home and deported veterans issue, where it's something that uh, people don't normally know about, but they need to. Yeah. I mean, now that you mentioned that, like what triggered it for you to be like, let's raise awareness about uh, about uh, about like the whole vet and military. Oh, I just got chills. Honestly, speaking of which, because it is Veterans Day. So happy Veterans Day to all of um, our veterans out there. Um, it's a good time for this conversation. For for me personally, uh, what triggered the idea is I felt like I had a very human obligation uh, to contribute to the conversation in any way possible. And, you know, when I talk to people, I, I talk to them about contribution. My contribution to society is creativity. Mm. Um, and there's multiple ways that people can bring things to the table um, for contributing in society to pushing society forward. Um, for me, it is um, creativity mm. uh, to tell stories, you know. Uh, it's always been that way, even with music. You know, I write my best songs when I tell a story or I speak about a very deep human experience. Mm -hmm. So with, with the veterans issue, when it came across, I just felt drawn or mm -hmm. called to do whatever I possibly can, you know? Um, and so it was leading with a lot of blind faith, to be honest, um, and not necessarily having all the answers, but trusting the process and just deciding to jump in the water and then figuring out how to swim. Wow. Okay. That must have been at the same time scary, right? Or like what like like what's the word here? Like uh challenging, right? For you to take that leap of faith and see what happens. Yeah, it was extremely challenging. Uh and I'm not gonna sit here and say it wasn't scary it was very uh different you know totally. um, you know they say that the uh definition of courage isn't the absence of fear but having fear and choosing to move forward anyways you know and so um it was challenging it was a lot of learning um uh that was involved um and a lot of risk taking um involved um uh, a lot of introductions to people um that I didn't know. And a lot of uh, the uh, having the ability to be willing to listen, like um, I personally have no connection to veterans. I remember dad was in the Air Force, uh, but um, I, I wasn't a veteran. I'm not a veteran. Uh, I'm not an immigrant. Um, I'm African-American. I was born in Tacoma, Washington. But for me, it was like, it doesn't matter from the human experience, it's worth it for me to step out of my comfort zone if I know that my why is aligned with the overall greater good. And I'm very, very much completely 125% unapologetic about that. Totally. Wow. Oh, that's deep. Okay. I mean, it is interesting because for example, for me, I mean, I live in Mexico. I was born and raised here. So, you know, like the whole, uh, whenever, whenever, like, what I'm trying to say here is that for us here, like the whole veterans and everything, I mean, it's 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 weird for us to it sometimes could be not weird, but we don't under, we let's say that we don't understand it. The reason is because we don't. It's different. I mean, I'm I'm just gonna leave it like that. That is different. But like my it's point, a different relationship. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like a total like a total different relationship. I mean, when you hear here like here having the chance, uh. Of family members or friends whenever they say i'm gonna join the military is like cool you know like good for you like for example people from the u.s when they say they're gonna join the military is like wow i mean such an honor such that's amazing you know like they really like uh it's a really it's a really um what's the word here um hmm, like um it's yeah well, basically my point here is that that it's different it's way too different for us here so so the fact that you wanted to 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 uh to raise awareness to uh to uh to talk about that topic, 
in also having the chance as as uh, as you said that you are not a vet are not a vet or anything but you managed to make that happen that is really cool and i think that is also um a topic that more people should know you know because i do think that the whole uh um military service uh being a vet and everything i, I do think that for those who haven't served at all or don't know anything about like 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 the whole military it can sometimes we might misunderstood certain type of behaviors from them but mm -hmm. at the same time i mean since we haven't since since we don't know anything about it it's sometimes let's say easy easy for us to judge let's say right. when we haven't been in that situation so the fact that you make that happen also it is it is i would say that it is kind of a uh to give a little taste you know of of how of how the whole thing is you know Totally. I mean, and that, that that's what we were really big on is when we created the film, it's a very factual film. We just kind of laid out what it is. But at the core of what we wanted to do uh, was humanize the story, you know, and humanize the experiences, um, you know, that that was very important to us because I do believe that there's being a civilian. I even say it myself, you know, like now, you know, I have a lot of friends who are veterans and I'm very transparent that there is a, a disconnect between um, saying thank you for your service and that just being a bottled up word that you say, but it's so disconnected from the actual sacrifices and experiences that veterans have and the commitment that they actually went through. Totally. You know? And it's like for citizens, we, I think that there's this natural thing that we do where we, we want to say, I appreciate you, but we don't want to hear too much. You know what I'm saying? And the reason yeah. why is because we understand, we we only can imagine the pain that's on the other side of that experience. And so like what I have been saying to like my people is like, yo, just hold a conversation, just open up the space to be able to understand it more and just uh, create dialogue and start bridging the gaps, you know? Totally. Uh, I think that in, in America, there's a natural, it's kind of like a double flip coin, but where we honor them, but then they're not taken care of, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. so how do we actually go beyond just saying happy veterans day, but actually invest our time into the organizations that are supporting our veterans after they're coming home. And yeah. why, why is it so hard for these veterans who have sacrificed their life, sacrificed time with their family, sacrificed you know what I'm saying? Their mental state, their well, their health, their wealth, their well-being, you know what I mean? Totally. Uh, to get access um, to the different funding or get access to the different uh, um, support base that they need to just exist at this point. You know totally. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. for me as an it's like I said, I'm not, I'm not necessarily, I'm not no necessarily. I'm I'm not a veteran. I'm just a human being. And I'm passionate and uh, I'm just kind of like, you know, wrong is wrong, right is right. And we got to eventually start talking about these things and having a dialogue. And so the documentary was a very good way to open up a window to not only speak about xenophobia, speak about what it is to be a person of color, what it is to be an immigrant, but then also how veterans themselves are being treated, mental health when it's attached to veterans, it just opened up so many um, different um, conversations and I don't have the answers that my oh. contribution personally isn't having the answers. My goal is to utilize the creativity to put the right people in the room who do have the answers and empower the public to get involved in those conversations. That's, mm. that's my job. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think that, yeah, that, that there's this huge misconnection between those who have served and civilians, let's say, you know, mm -hmm. the, um, yeah, I cannot, yeah, yeah. I, I once got the chance to speak, uh, uh, to speak with a, with a veteran, but, um, so at that moment I was living in Germany and he was, he was returning. He was, uh, he was, uh, he was an American soldier who was returning home, but he was, uh, in Germany for a while. And, we basically became friends because we were like waiting for the waiting for the train. Uh, I was smoking. He asked for a cigarette. We 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 started chatting here and there. Uh, it was really cool. And I remember that he told me that uh, that that he told me that the hardest part now for him it was 
the the fact of going back home you know that even though that he was so excited about it he was also scared about it because he was one year away he didn't know like uh like uh he got used to uh he got used to the life he got there and now to be back and let's say have like a normal life you know pay bills uh go to uh go to work all of the all, all of the all of the normal things uh civilians do it was challenging for him that it was going to be really challenging and he was uh not sure how was how he was going to how he was going to take it and and as an outsider i was just like trying to be like like how that difficult uh, might be, you know, the fact that, I mean, they, they don't also go there, but the fact that they go through training, they have to literally strip them up and re and, and re, re like re put them together and send them in, you know, like all of those stuff that we sometimes might see on movies or, 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 or like things like that, but to actually live it. I mean, I, I, I do think that there is, as you mentioned, like this conversation that should be, um, yeah, should be noted, you know, and at the same time, try to have like this understanding with, the veterans once they are rejoining la society itself you know what i mean yeah no totally absolutely and i mean some of the conversations that i have these are not my stories these are the conversations uh that i've had uh, with veterans and and heard some of the challenges is is you know um being uh in service and having being in a place of um either I don't want to say authority, but having really strong significance um, in, in in the military and then transferring back into the public and then struggling to even get a job because those opportunities aren't there, being underqualified or overqualified. So it's like, man, I was just running a platoon in Afghanistan, but now I can't even get a job at Walmart. Like, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what, does that, what does that do to the psyche of a person and and how they identify as like a human being you know what i'm saying totally it's it's it's, it's i mean I, I it's layer cake you know what i mean mm -hmm. um but hopefully we could just start stripping off layers you know totally totally yeah yeah i can yeah yeah i can understand that and um like checking more about what you do on your uh, on your link tree uh, on your link tree, which I'm gonna leave uh, the link on below on the description on this episode. Um, we have a lot of more a lot of more different content there. Tell me like like how like how like what is like what is your goal? Let's say like what is yeah like what is the goal you try to achieve from all of the different content you manage to hear in there? Like what is the main goal for you or like the thing you want to? achieve when you are in the process and when you deliver those uh those projects let's say yeah absolutely okay i feel a little guilty i'm like man i forgot to check my link tree <laughs> 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 but um um i uh everything is really like through a creative vessel you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying um mm -hmm. i have some music up there um uh that i do um and you know all the music that I do for, for about like ninety percent is a substance, you know, um, sharing stories. Um, I have a company called Dreamroots Creative. Dreamroots Creative is a um, creative company uh, where we do you know anything from A to Z creation. So that's uh, websites, uh, film, uh, graphic design, et cetera. The latest project that we just did. Uh, with the, uh, excuse my accent, Dreamers Creative, and then L Six One Productions, my sure. partners in uh, Washington, uh, as we did a um, marquee video for um, the Department of Equity uh, underneath Dr. Karen Johnson, and uh, Department of Equity in Washington State is the first Department of Equity in governmental history. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and Dr. Karen Johnson is the first director of equity uh, in government history. So we just did that. And we did another project with um, PeaceWorks um, and Pacific Lutheran University and um, Melanie uh, Cunningham, um, where it's, it was called the People's Golf Gathering. Um, and I did all the creative direction on that. The People's Golf Gathering was having out of bounds conversations about race on a golf course. Oh, okay. uh, so it was basically utilizing uh, the game of golf as a centerpiece to be able to talk about intercultural communication and privilege and et cetera, et cetera. Mm. 
which I thought was phenomenal. It was like, wow, that's a brilliant idea. Um, so, um, and then, you know, I'm also working with, uh, on the board for um, a nonprofit called Kwana Ike, uh, which is looking to spread awareness of um, aloha as a spiritual way of life. Um, and so saying all these things, I think that there's a, that there's definitely a, a connection of um, spreading awareness uh, at its core, but then also um, opening up doors for conversations uh, to be had from intercultural communication and building opportunity for equity. Um, and also, I can't forget excusemyaccent.com, which is the foundation of everything. Uh, which is uh, the, you know, the staple company uh, to do these kind of things, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. We have a, a big vision with Excuse My Accent um, to see that uh, grow. That's that's pretty cool. And now let's say that one day I call you and then I tell you, I want to start the whole filmmaking business. Now I don't, I don't have any experience at all, <laughs> like none. So based on what you know and on your experience, what advice could you give to someone who doesn't know anything about it, but wants to start as a career change? Ooh, wants to start getting in a film as a career change. Based on my experience. Yeah. I would say one, take the word persistence and put that word underneath your pillow and sleep on it and just like hold that word, put it in a your back pocket. And whenever you feel a challenge, I want you yeah. to pull out and stare at it. Um, that's one. Um, I would say to um, involve yourself with individuals who are doing the work already. Mm. Um, look towards your niche and what makes you tick uh, and master that. Um, and get active in different film communities um, and seek out the right stories and make sure that you're um, surrounding yourself with individuals who see your vision okay. um, and can empower you from that place. Um, All right. That was a lot of fluff, but that'd be my advice, man. That's there you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take that into consideration if I if I want to make that happen. I like it. Okay. Now, yeah. if you had to describe your whole career on a film, let's say Netflix or HBO or even Paramount, say we want to make a film based on your career, what would be the name of that film? Ooh, that was another cold question. Um, it would be. Oh, I got it. It would be, um, and I got a story behind this. You ready? This All is right. good. Uh, it would be, it takes a collective. And uh, the reason why I say that, that's the 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 marquee phrase for, excuse my accent. And um, on this pathway of everything that I've done, I really honor the people who, have worked with me to get to this point. Um, I mean, for the Bring Them Home project, when I counted it, it is around 11 different um, ethnicities okay. involved in bringing that story um, to light. Uh, no different with, excuse my accent. Um, and, you know, the truth about it is People say this all the time. They could say, like, I did it on my own. I did it. I just like, yeah. no, you didn't, bro. <laughs> there's like a there's an army of people behind you. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And um, and everything that I have done, um, I wouldn't be able to get to this point if it wasn't for my team. You know what I'm saying? Um, Audrey, mm. Michael Lopez, Elaine, Daniel Torres. Uh, the people on the Excuse My Accent project uh, for the music video, shout out to Dre, like I said before, um, um, people who started with the Bring Them Home, Tamara, uh, Jay. So, I mean, it's just uh, um, uh, it's just been a constant, um, ever-evolving path of collective energy, hmm. you know? And so I personally um, always 
to those people. Okay. I like it. Now, what about describing your career on a drink? <laughs> what about that one? I was thinking about that. I was like, man, I was, uh, I was shaving. Like, how would you describe your, okay. At first I wanted to say a whiskey and say, cause it's been smooth, but mm. that's a lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not... If then yeah, I would Huh? Uh, that uh, that uh, that you can mix drinks if you want. I mean, if you want to put, I don't know, uh, tequila with some vodka and some juice. On, I mean, you can mix. It's okay. Okay, I'm gonna. This is gonna trip people out. This is the truth. It'd be a vodka, Tito's, with some soda water, mm. some olive juice, and a little olive on top. And I call that the ghetto dirty martini. That's that's what I call it. And the reason why. Is because it has definitely been a gritty process mm. and it hasn't been pretty all the time, but man, it's done the job. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. 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 You know, like one of the projects that I have at some point is to, uh, to open up a bar. And my idea here is to, instead of having, you know, of course they will have like the regular drinks, but One of the things that I'm that I'm like working on is at some point have the drinks of the people that I've interviewed. For example, uh, you know, like for example, if, if, uh, if you want uh, uh, your career your career on a drink, here we go, you know, and put the name on it, you know, like being able like to label like all of all of the, all the people that I've interviewed with like with the respective drinks, you know, so then people can try and be like, man, his career is tough, you know, or, or, or you know, or things like <laughs> exactly. that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mine would be a double shot ghetto dirty martini. That, there you go. Yeah, There you go. Yeah, put my name next to that. This is Rob. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. And like my last question here is like, what motivates you? You know, we all have those days in which we just want to quit. You know, regardless if things might be normal or even things are good, we have like this feeling, you know, like uh, like this feeling that we start questioning ourselves. We start to think that, oh, this has been a waste of time, blah, 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 and all that. So I wonder like for you, what put you back on yeah like what what puts you back on the road so you can continuing yeah i mean i um i recently went and uh, uh spoke to some kids about this and and uh i asked them what their dream was mm. and they all told me what their dream was and then I, i i went around and asked them why you know um and i had them really think about what their why is and dive deep into that and um uh what i told them was is that when the road gets tough And you hit those challenges. If you remember your why, not the dream, but why, that's what's going to carry you over. And um, for me, um, I'm deeply passionate about creating foundations for empathy. And I deeply care about people, you know? Yeah. Uh, I want to have people affected by the works that I do if that means laugh cry get angry you know to want to take action um I'm really addicted um to being uh, uh a soldier in the army of the light I don't know if that means anything to anyone but mm. to me it means that um there's a way to be someone who contributes to society and has the ability to change the world. And when people say, I want to change the world, sometimes people think like, okay, this dude wants to, you know, be the president. It's like, no, yeah. uh, changing the world doesn't change. You could change in the world could be um, walking down the street and you see someone who's, you know, sad and you smile at them and just tell them it's going to be okay. And you don't know that that person was actually thinking about committing suicide, you know, totally. um, there's, there's multiple ways to contribute to this thing we call life in the human experience. And I'm addicted and committed to doing whatever I can that at the end of the day, after I die, I, believe in God. I just, I want God to be like, all right, man, you might've started slow, but you did your thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 totally. The other day I was watching this uh this interview uh they did to uh Dance of Washington and then he was saying that you have to have an attitude of gratitude. You know, that at the end you need to with what you have help others, you know, because at the end when you die, you're not gonna have you I mean you're not gonna take all that you had with you, you know, but you can leave it here. You know, you can leave it here to as a tool for somebody else, you know, and that is and that I, I do agree. Uh, yeah, I do believe the same thing that uh that if somehow you can help someone, uh, then that's that's mi that's mission accomplished, you know. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, it's so funny you said that because in the excuse my accent song, I said uh, you can't put a U on the back of a casket, you know. Yeah. It's like, spin it all on some Louis Vuitton baggage, went across the access, little girl asking for access to a world mattress. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm still a rapper, so I'm still gonna rap. Oh, I love it, love it. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But <laughs> but I mean, at the end, at the end, what can I say? I mean, I mean, you, your career is pretty cool here, and the fact that you, uh, that you want to send a message with your content, with what, uh, with what you are creating, and the fact that you're actually making it happen, and also, for example, as we were talking before, the whole that you, uh, that you choose a topic to speak about the veterans, you know, and 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 basically the fact that you want to, um, that you are reaching topics that none of us talk about it or none of us we usually mention it the fact that you're like this is uh i have something here check it out that's pretty cool and i mean it's it's more than obvious that eventually everybody's gonna everybody's gonna know about what you do and they're gonna love what you do because it is super inspiring and it's pretty cool thank you man i really appreciate that i, I appreciate you seeking me out and um giving me a platform you know yeah absolutely i mean think at the end uh, again again i mean uh, if this if this chat with them thing is possible at the end, it's because of all of you amazing talented people that have that have, that have the the opportunity to speak with. I mean, without you, we don't. I mean, I wouldn't be here to start with, you know. So uh, I'm I'm always gonna be super grateful whenever they uh they uh give me time to make this happen um also i want to thank those who are watching this right now thank you so much if you're watching this i mean the, the video is pretty much over so what you what you're gonna have to do is to go follow robert right now into his social media i'm gonna leave all of the links below so you can check him out leave a million likes i mean let's make him viral hashtag team robert she's awesome she's bad uh you, you're super cool here you're super badass and um and again man thank you so so much for making this happen uh keep killing it keep being super awesome and i'll be definitely seeing the next one thank you bro all Appreciate right. It. And that's a wrap.